Okay, folks, well, it's definitely that time of year. Uh, here, middle of November, Western Michigan. The snow has started, so that means it's time to turn the heating system okay, on. As you've seen in my previous videos, I've got the, uh, what I call the boiler room here where all of my radiant heat system comes together. And uh, I'll kind of walk you through the steps that I use to start up my system. First thing I do if I go over here to my Polaris uh, dual water heater, as you can notice uh, normal on the top, that's for my domestic hot water system. And then over here on the left, I have a uh, an outlet for circulating the hot water through that heat exchanger. And then it goes down here to the bottom where it goes back in and you can see the pump in the back that does that circulation. So I typically keep those valves off when it's not heating system. So first step is going to be, let's open up these valves. Uh, we'll come down here and we'll go ahead and open that one. And that's just to, you know, kind of during the summer, I don't have any heat loss going through those pipes. Uh, really, the second thing that I do is uh, you can notice up there where my controllers are, I just unplug them for the summer. That way, if uh, anybody turns a thermostat on in the house uh, inadvertently, it's not going to activate anything. So we'll go ahead and plug those right in. Pretty simple. And the next one. All right. Uh, you may have heard, had a call for heat. Uh, you can see the lights on there, the controller. And you might be able to hear the main circulator pump going on. That's a Taiko uh, 0011, really beefy pump. You know, I'm, I'm pumping through 500 foot loops for the Fred Seaton design, and I'm pumping through Two manifolds. This manifold is fully occupied with eight circuits, and this one I've got five of the eight circuits occupied. So 13 circuits in all, and I'll tell you what that little pump, actually it's not too little, <laughs> it does a great job. Alright, after a couple of weeks of startup, I noticed a noise coming out of my room here, and uh, it was coming from that main circulator pump. Um, shut everything down and discovered, and I'll show you here the part, I discovered that the cartridge that goes inside of that pump, first of all you can see it's uh, discolored here, which was the first clue what happened, and then uh, let's see if I can pull this thing out, um, yeah, look at that, uh, that shaft just cracked right off, and look at all the burn marks on there. Well basically after some uh, consultation talking with a few folks including uh, Fred Seaton who helped me with the design of this as well as my plumber discovered that uh, I'm missing something in my design. Well not my design, Fred actually did design in a bypass valve but uh, through miscommunication between myself and my plumber it never got installed. I actually have it. Uh, I went and went looking for it and uh, here it is. It's just a uh, Taiko bypass valve and basically where that's supposed to go is uh, if you follow the arrow on that. It's supposed to go right up there um, and then uh, connect between the hot water line coming in and the cold water line coming out. So uh, I'm gonna have to have my plumber come back and, and make that connection for me. I could probably do it myself, but he was really uh, gracious about it and he's only gonna charge me half price for doing it. Um, basically what had happened without that, while these actuators take some time to actually come on and open up the valve, um, this pump was deadheading. In other words, it was it was turned on by the call of the thermostat, but didn't have anywhere to push the water. So it was just uh, pounding itself. And I'll tell you, after 
six winters of use, I'm kind of surprised it lasted that long. Um, so what I've done for now until I can have my plumber come out is I've actually taken the actuator off of this circuit right here and just put a normal valve uh, control on it. It's a manual valve control that I can uh, adjust. You can see here um, as I adjust it, uh, the flow meter moves. <clears throat> and that way, uh, that'll stay open. So no matter which thermostat's calling for heat, the pump will always have uh, a loop to circulate in until the actuators actually come on. And yeah, that, that room probably will get a little warm until then, but uh, it'll save my pump until I can get this little beauty installed. So, uh, actually three ways to avoid this, as I've uh, learned. The first is I could go ahead and replace this pump with what's known as a variable speed sensing pump. And what that would do is I wouldn't even need that connection through here and then up into my controllers. I could just plug that variable speed pump right into a 110 outlet and it'll sense uh, if it's starting to deadhead and it'll actually shut itself off and then it'll pump at varying speeds depending upon how many circuits are open. Um, that would have cost me about $470 uh, to replace that pump. The cartridge that I got cost a new cartridge to put in there cost about $150 and that's what I ended up doing. Another way to avoid this is to use four wire actuators. And as you can see here, I've got two wire actuators that go up into my controllers. And basically the difference is a four wire, there'll be a signal that travels in one of those extra wires that tells the controller when that valve is completely open. And then that will signal down to the pump that it's okay to turn on. Uh, but these two wire actuators, uh, you don't have that extra signal coming back and uh, the pump's going to go on as soon as the actuator starts receiving current and it's going to take a little bit for those to open up and the last way the third way is, is where i'm going to go i'm going to just go ahead and get this uh, bypass valve installed and that basically will create a uh, emergency loop <clears throat> sorry I'm, I'm holding that probably the wrong way but uh, that'll create an emergency loop um, that uh, if, if the pump is uh, starting to uh, come up against some pressure, this bypass valve will open up and just allow the, the water to circulate between there and then back in, back to the heat exchanger and just create a small loop for that so that the pump doesn't deadhead. Well, I hope uh, this has been helpful for some of you. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know, and I'd be happy to try and address them. Thanks, have a great day, and enjoy the snow.